I'm going to do some spark testing. Let me start by saying this. I have never felt comfortable about using spark testing of iron bearing materials as the way to tell for certain exactly what a sample really is. But many folks do seem to like this method. I guess they are all smarter than I am. Anyway, 30 years ago or so, I was able to purchase a couple of hundred three-quarter inch square spikes that were used in a wooden bridge over the Minnesota River. The bridge had been dynamited at the end of its useful life and it fell into the river, eventually lodging at the head end of an island. There, most of the bridge laid until the wood all rotted away. Some enterprising guy mined up hundreds of the spikes, hoping to sell them for $10 a piece back in about 1995. There weren't many takers, so he sold a bunch of them to me for about 25 cents a piece. They vary in length from about 18 inches to about 24 inches and weigh about 3 and 4 pounds each. They were supposedly made of wrought iron. Recently, a friend used some of these spikes in the making of a small ceremonial axe and had trouble getting some of them to forge weld very well. He said that one or more of them spark tested as though they were not wrought iron. So, I decided to spark test several samples of my remaining spikes against a known wrought iron sample to see if I could tell the difference. I figured that if I had this testing on video, I'd be able to see plenty of detail at my leisure with some stop motion as needed. That's how this video came to be. I even threw in several other ferrous materials to round the testing out. One caveat as you watch this. The color rendition is not necessarily correct. Reddish colors often show up as a lot hotter, as in red turns to orange and orange turns to white. With that in mind, let's get into it. First, a piece of 4140. Another one of these bridge spikes where I've sanded I don't see as much green but anyway that's where what it looks like there Back to the first bridge spike, maybe to show with the shininess down in the slot there, how much grain there is. This is the longest bridge spike that I have. And there's what that looks like. And as I rotate it around, I don't see as much 
draining that's in there. But of course, these guys were buried in the Minnesota River for a hundred years. In my personal opinion, uh, I don't think you're ever going to get any definitive answers out of spark testing. I personally think that the best use of spark testing is in a controlled environment, a place where, let's say, in a shop, there are only three kinds of steel, and somebody has mismarked or failed to mark one of the three pieces that's laying there. So you know it's got to be one of three kinds of steel and you've practiced this. Try your sample piece and see what the sparks look like and then try samples of each of the other three known steels in the shop and there I think with a somewhat practiced eye you can say that's X or Y or Z with some certainty. Thanks for watching.